Okay, well, listen, you did a lot of other stuff. You, uh... Lots, lots of yeah, things. Yeah, lots of stuff. Lots of things, you know. Fox series, My Wildest Dream. But uh, you was way back in... Um, my first TV series was 1987, Tour of Duty, the best show. Yeah, Tour of Duty here. You did Action Jackson. Joel Silver gave me that right after that movie. And Lethal Weapon 3, you gave me that right after that. And let's just go and talk about Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights was an awesome dude. It was so fun because Eddie was directing. He was just every night. Please, everybody go back and watch Harlem Nights Harlem again. Nights, it was. What yeah. in the world was it like? Because the only thing I could liken it to was when I did Coming to America. That's exactly what it was bunch like. A bunch of big stuff all at once. Yeah, but you had Richard Pryor. Yeah, and you yeah. had Red Fox. And yeah. You had Della. And, to, and, and if you know Eddie would say, Eddie would come on like, oh, damn. That's what? Red Fox, man. He always wanted to be in more stuff. He always wanted more lines. If you notice the movie, he always wanted the last line. He always did it. Yeah, shut up, mm -hmm. fat bitch. Mm -hmm. He always <laughs> had to have that last line. Well, you know, he's Red. He, he was Red. Well. I love Red. I Richard. still watch Sanford and Son. I, how does it feel to look back at that though? I still watch. I love. Does it, it get you excited still? No, I don't. I, I've never gotten excited about anything I've done. You didn't get excited about that. You looked excited a minute ago. No, I was excited about the fun you had. Mm -hmm. Okay, good old hanging with Mr. Cooper, oh. and uh, really genius. I love what's that on Martin? Oh, you did Martin. Yes, he's pretty Martin regular to call me. And Thea Vidal, who's oh, yes. my friend. Yeah, I did Thea's first TV show, and guess who was a little kid on the show? Um, 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 Ray J's sister. Oh, Brandy. Yeah. Brandy. Because and I said, listen to me. And she was like, I can sing. And she'll tell you this story true. And I was like, really? I said, let me hear you. And she sung in the room. I was like, what the hell? Give me a hand. I grabbed her hand. I took her out to the audience. I said, hold on, stop, stop. They were like, what is he doing? Stop. This little girl has a voice, and she sung for the audience. I said, let me tell you something. You're going to be a huge, huge star. I promise you. And she was. Yeah, and she and she she is. she was awesome. Yeah, Thea. But Thea was mean to her. Thea, <laughs> well, Thea was the first black woman to have a show in her name. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and she was Thea. awesome. I loved her. Yeah, I, I still love Thea. She me had too. me back when I was. I just watched her on some show well. with a bunch of other comedians, other female comedians. She was. I just saw this. It was the other night, late. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, let me talk about real quick because we're skipping around, but this is fine. I want to talk about for me, yeah, baby. one of the low key funniest roles that you did for me was when you did Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Now, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think that that was so comedic, but for me, what tickled me was how fucking annoyed you were with Martin. Oh. Like you were so annoyed. Like, I'm the fucking chicken, you know. You <laughs> Every time you see what I look at him, I hear Yes. Every time he came. <laughs> that shit It's the little me. subtle thing. Yes. That's why. It's the it. subtle shit. Yes. I said he's so fucking annoyed. That cracked me the hell Because you can, you can literally be the focus of a scene. And, and, even be the, and it, do the least. And, exactly. And not have any lines in it. Right. <laughs> Don't look at him. Look at me. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, now, Regina. Yeah, I love her. Uh, are you still friends with Regina? Uh, absolutely. She's a yeah. really, a lover. I can't see not being friends with Regina. Yeah. Once Sweetest she... girl in history, never changed. Yeah. yeah. She's one of those people that doesn't didn't let, you know. And she had it in her young. Really? Good look. Yeah, from 22. Oh, 227. 227 yeah, on right. up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you did Sparks. Oh, my favorite show. Was it? It was my favorite show. Tell people about Sparks. Sparks, you know, it's it was weird on about UPN. Sparks. UPN, it was, it was a show with me, Terrence Howard, Robin Givens, Listen James Avery, Arif S. Kinchin. It was really, and Kim Whitley. Yeah, Kim, Kim Whitley was Uncle hilarious. Kim. And I remember I was on a plane coming back from doing a film. Actually, I was, I didn't get the audition for that show because I was told that the cast director said I wasn't right for it. Mm. So the executive producer, Ed Weinberger, was on an airplane coming to LA and saw me in something on the plane. He got off the plane and said, I saw this kid, and da 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 da. And, and, and that's how I got the audition. I rushed over to the studio. I'm like, what's going on? And they was like, listen, da da da. I thought it was a drama, right? And it's just about a law firm, da da da. Robin yeah. Givens and James Avery show. I said, Robin Givens and James Avery? Oh, this is right after, what's your, oh, good. I said, what, what, give it to me, give it to me. And they said, okay, here, you're gonna have to pair it with somebody. Uh, what's your name? Terrence Howard. Come here, you two go together. And they put everybody together. And I said, okay, you guys are gonna be brothers. Now, this is how Ed Weinberger does his networks, which has never been done before in this debate. Ed Weinberger is so big. Ed Weinberger created the college mm -hmm. show, Cheers, mm -hmm. Taxi, Mary Tyler Moore, Amen. Ed said, we're not going to no uh, network. 
I'm not going to no network and sit in no office and have my people in it. You're not going to get the best representation of what they can do. So he made the network come to the studio. He rented a stage. We had to go to wardrobe, make all this stuff. They had the sets and everything. And then they said, okay, you two go. And Ed, right before we get Ed said, listen to me. Don't worry about the lines. You would love Ed. Yeah, I would. You I'm would. Because I remember lines. we were doing Sparks. <laughs> if, some, if a writer said, say what's on the page, Ed said, what did he say? He said, did you just tell an actor to say what's on the page? And no, no writers could ever come back on the stage. He said, the script is a guideline. You hired them to do it. Let them do it. Right? So Ed says, listen to me. Don't worry about the script. Just go in there and just kill it. Be funny. I said, wait, so we don't have to, we ain't married to these lines on the page. He said, yeah, so I'm like, shit, let's go. So I go in and me and Terrence in there, we're doing it. And we come out and Terrence said, hey, man. All right, man. He'll tell you the story. I'll see you later. I said, like, what? He said, man, I'm sorry. I messed up all my lines. I said, brother, stop. I will see you on the set Monday. They were laughing so hard at my shit, they never even knew you said your line wrong. I'll see you Monday and walk out. But what he didn't know was the Greg character was, he was that. So every time I saw him struggling with something, yeah, yeah. I jump in with a joke. So it made them think he was doing the Greg thing. So it worked perfect because Greg was the bubbling, uh, stumbling brother. When I saw him with a line, I was like, wait, 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 wait. And I come up with something hilarious. So they thought he was in on it. I said, brother, I promise you I'll see you on the set Monday. And he was on the set Monday. So now we do, we come to Why Do Fools Fall Why in Love? Why do fools fall in love? What an experience. Frankie Lyman so story. And, I, and that audition, um, he came in. Uh, Your Kemp. wives, the, the wives were what, Vivica, Vivica Fox, Halle, Halle Berry, and. Oh, uh, Layla Rashawn. Layla Rashawn. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That was an awesome project. Yeah. All that music, the state, and they did it right. Do you enjoy doing like a uh, themed, uh, you know, throwback like uh, Motown ish type stuff? Oh, I would or, love, yeah. Or other I, kind I, of I, I, I love doing anything. Me, I love mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I did Street Fighter. I was a Street Fighter. I did Scooby Doo. Uh, you know, I love doing anything fun and exciting. Every little project is fun and exciting me. And it I is still get in its own way. It. But you have worked in some really star studded things. Like you've been around some heaters. And then, as if, then, then comes life. <laughs> Woo! Miguel, I know. I got to tell you, <laughs> I know from myself. And I know Guy and, of course, Eddie and, you know, Bernie. everybody, you know, them all. Um, I, I know that I have probably seen life probably 45 <laughs> I said 30 times. times. Okay. Because, first of all, on BET and stuff, it used to come on back to back, back to, to back. back, back. And I'd watch it sometimes back to back. Every to time back. I see it, you got it. For some reason, you just got to stop. You got to stop. You got to stop. Biscuit. <laughs> Your character, Biscuit. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you what we were saying to the people that are, are watching and listening, what, what you and I were saying before the interview started. I said that as funny and as quirky as you are, you have a deep, dark, you have a, you have a lot of richness to pull from, which person wouldn't automatically see. But when you go hard and do the hard stuff and the deep stuff, that blows me. And I'm going to tell you, you was funny and quirky and all that. But when you said, I'm fucking out of here, Miguel, I could cry right now. And you started running, running, and you're like, I'm gone, like, whatever. And they shot you. Like, I'm choked up, dude. And like, I, I can right tell you something now. About that. I can tell you something about that scene. Jesus. When I did that scene, that, there was no speech. Remember when 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 Goldmouth, the big, you ate your cornbread? When, when they started going to the end, they went to him, and he turned, and he just faded out. Yeah. That's how they got rid of us. All they had was me running to the gun line and getting shot. I went to the draft. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm dying today. What do you mean? I'm, I'm just going to get shot? I said, you're not even going to tell the audience. I didn't get, you know, he fade now. I didn't get it that time. I'm like, so I'm just going to, what? You're just going to, all of this stuff with him. And now he's going to disappear and go away. He said, Miguel, I'm not a writer. What are you talking about? I said, well, we got to give him a reason for doing it. He said, what are you talking about? That's something you go talk to the writers about. We're getting ready to shoot it right now. So what's the reason? I tell you what, bring the cameras. Let's go. So I went over there and I was like, and Edison was doing everything I said, I made up all of that by going home. And when I pulled the paper out for my mom, it was a call sheet. Eddie was like, oh. Eddie was like, yeah, man, what's wrong with you? None of that was in there. And another thing, when I said, don't be scared, uh-uh, don't be scared. As famous as that line is and became, Eddie is so smart. He walked up to me right after I finished and said, hey, if I was you, I would get that thing, that line registered. 
Nope. See, they wasn't Certainly. fucking with us back then. They still ain't fucking with us. But you right. said you definitely deserved a NAACP award, Soul Train award. I ain't never got no award. BET, I don't know nothing. I think it's because uh, my name, Miguel Nunez. Because I've been doing stuff uh, on BET for years. <laughs> I think it's because of that. And they be, I've been going on like for other people uh -huh. and, and doing stuff for them where they have specials and I go home and talk for them. And these are people who were extras on all the shit. You, know, you absolutely deserve some kind of like a lifetime achievement. You know, you don't have to get over You ain't going to never that. find anybody with his may not be black without him DB credits me. Never. It's not possible. Not even Sam Jackson. That hurts me. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, my reward is helping other people. My reward is when people come up to you and say, hey, and they're smiling. Because everybody say, Miguel, why are you so accessible? Why are you so accessible? Why do you let people do this to you? And why, why you that? And, and Eddie explained it to me a long time ago. And it really, really helped me. He said, you got to remember, man, when these people go home and close their doors and put their security code in and they got their wife and their children, it's just them and you. You've been on there with, with them all oh, oh, that's their whole life. Mm -hmm. The kids watch Scooby Doo, they grew up with you. They, so when they see you, that's why it's this. They feel like you, they know you. It's a, you're part of their family. You've been in their house with them at night. What are you talking about? And you act like this. They don't get that because they, they've been a part of you. Yeah, well, it's easy for Eddie to say that because he is not, in fact, accessible. So what the fuck? <laughs> listen, I, I had a lady once. <laughs> listen, I had a lady once. I've been lying, right? And you know, it's in Atlanta somewhere. And the counter's down there, I'm standing there, and she's doing like this. She said, you know who you is. <laughs> and the guy behind me said, no, who is he? And I got a suit on and everything. And he said, no, 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 she said, come here. And she drug me back there to, and then the guy behind the counter, she said, oh no, he's in the movies. So the guy said, what do you mean you got a movie star here? She go, oh, so now I guess she's gonna try to show up for the owner. She's gonna start dragging me to the counter. I said, whoa, lady, what are you doing? She said, you know what, you are very rude. <laughs> Yeah. I was rude because I wouldn't let her drag me up. Yeah, yeah. But I was happens. still nice. You got to be nice. It happens. You got to deal with it. It's okay, so it. as Biscuit, when when they presented it to you, oh, was, good. I'm glad was you asked Biscuit me that. a gay character when they presented it to you? Okay, yes. When they and, they didn't present it to me, they mm -hmm. gave me us to read the script. Let me know, Brian Grazier. Let me know which role you want to play. Right. Oh, let me know which role you want to play. I wanted to play the gay guy because I thought it was a deeper role and I could do more with that. Everybody else was just, you know, I don't know the remember when I really was Bernie and everybody else had some funny stuff, but there was enough deep, deep enough for me to play. Mm -hmm. Everybody remember Biscuit. Mm -hmm. Everybody had emotions for Biscuit. You know, did you cry when, when, gold, when, when you ate your cornbread diet? No. no. So it had the most depth and I said, that's the one I want to play. Mm -hmm. And so then after that, and Did I got you, gold mouth his job too, by the way, which Tiny was always mad at me till he Tiny listen. Yeah. Because I, I heard Tiny was up for it. So when I was when they first said they just wanted to come in and talk to you. So we had to go to universe and talk to the executive. And I was like, oh, and I spent my, my time talking about there's a role in here for a big guy who's saying, I got this guy named Bear. And Bear couldn't get the audition. He kept saying, Miguel, please help me, help me, help me. And I was like, oh, he this, he that, he can sing. He's like a big teddy bear. I they knew was, Bear. Yeah, they said he's like, and I, they was like, listen, do you who is this guy? And that's what I said, they said, can you get him to come in? And Bear came to Universal and went into the office and had the role when he left the office. And then I get a hundred texts from Tiny. Well, you you fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, did you have, uh, uh, as a result of playing Biscuit, which is one of your most iconic roles, um, did you have a uh, gay, uh, la um, you know, did you did people like associate you with being gay? Did Not you know, really. Gay rumors? Any, nope. Any rumors? I've never had that on me. Well, it's I probably because say, I don't roll well, too many of these sisters and I brothers and mothers that. and <laughs> <laughs> probably because they know at least a mother, a sister, or somebody that, that, I, don't, that I don't flip. So it's, <laughs> it ain't never really, it ain't never really been on me. I mean, hey, listen, God bless you. I love everybody. I'm not, if you're gay, you're gay. You're, 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 you're transvestite, you're transvestite. I believe that God said we're supposed to love, love our neighbor as ourselves. I love everybody. It's just not me.